The Christian in Complete Armor by William Grinnell. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17a. Chapter 9. Two duties pressed upon those who, upon trial, find this grace of hope in them. For exhortation, and this either respects believers who are furnished with this helmet, or unbelievers who yet are without hope. First, for you believers who, upon trial, are found to have this helmet of hope. Several duties are to be pressed upon you as such. Section 1. First, be thankful for this unspeakable gift. I will not believe thou hast it, if thy heart be not abundantly let out in thankfulness for it. Blessed Peter cannot speak of this, but in a doxology. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. 1 Peter 1, three, The usual uh, prompt to Paul's epistle is of this strain, Colossians 1.3, Ephesians 1.3, Hast thou heaven in hope? It is more than if thou hast the whole world in hand. The greatest monarch the earth hath will be glad in a dying hour to change his crown for thy helmet. His crown will not procure him this helmet, but thy helmet will bring thee to a crown, a crown not of gold, but of glory, which, once on, shall never be taken off, as his is sure to be. O remember, Christian, what but a short time since thou wert, so far from having any hope of heaven, that thou wert under a fearful expectation of hell and damnation, and are those chains of guilt with which thy trembling conscience was weighed down unto despair, taken off, and thy head lifted up to look for such high preferment, in the celestial court of that God, whose wrath thou hast, by thy horrid treasons, most justly incensed against thee? Certainly, of all the men in the world, thou art deepest in debt to the mercy of God. If he will be thanked for a crust, he looks, surely, thou shouldest give him more than a crown. If food and raiment though coarse and mean, be gratefully to be acknowledged. Oh, with what ravishment of love and thankfulness are you to think and speak of those rarities and robes with which you hope to be fed and clad in his heavenly kingdom, especially if you cast your eye aside and behold those that were once your fellow prisoners in what a sad and dismal condition they continue in, with all this happiness is befallen you. It could not surely but affect his heart into admiration of his prince's mercy and undeserved favor to him, who is saved from the gibbet only by his gracious pardon, if, as he is riding in a coach towards his prince's court, he should meet some of his fellow traitors on sledges as they are dragging, full of shame and horror, to execution, for the same treason in which he had as deep a hand as any of them. And dost not thou see, Christian, many of thy poor neighbors, with whom thou hast had a partnership in sin, pinned with impenitency and unbelief, driving swiftly to hell and destruction? while thou, by the free distinguishing mercy of God, art on thy way for heaven and glory? O down on thy knees, and cry out, Lord, why wilt thou show thyself to me, and not to these? How easy had it been, and righteous, for God to have directed the pardon to them, and the warrant of damnation unto thee. When thou hast spent thy own breath and spirits in praising God, Thou hast need beg a collection of praises of all thy friends who have a heart to contribute to such work. 
that they would help thee in paying this debt. Yet all this, with what in heaven thou shalt disperse thyself to all eternity, and better coin than can be expected from thee here, where thy soul is embased with sinful mixtures, must be accounted rather an acknowledgment of what thou owest to thy God than any payment of the debt. Section 2. Live up to thy hopes, Christian. Let there be a decorum kept between thy principles and thy practices, thy hope of heaven and walk on earth. The eye should direct the foot. Thou lookest for salvation. Walk the same way thy eye looks. This being so often pressed in the word shows both its necessity and difficulty. Sometimes we are stirred up to act as become as saints. Romans chapter 16 verse 2 Ephesians 5 3 Sometimes as become as the gospel of Christ. Philippians one twenty seven. Sometimes as become as those who profess godliness. 1 Timothy 2.10 There is decorum which is a Christian does not observe in his walk, he betrays his high calling in hopes upon scorn, to look high and live low. How ridiculous it appears. When a man is dressed on purpose to be laughed at and made a jeering stock, they put on him something of the king and something of the beggar, that, by this patchwork of mock majesty, he might appear the greater fool to all the company. And certainly, if the devil might have the dressing of a man, so as to cast a greater shame and ignominy upon him, yea, upon Christ in the profession of his gospel, he could not think of a readier way than to persuade a wretch to pretend to high and glorious hopes of heaven, and then to have nothing suitable to the high-flown hopes in his conversation, but all base and unworthy of such royal claims. If ye shall see one going into the field with a helmet of brass on his head, but a wooden sword in one hand and a paper shield on the other, and the rest of his armor similar to these, you would expect he was not likely to hurt his enemies, except they should break their sides with laughing at him. Such a goodly spectacle is the vain professor, who lifts up his head on high with a bold expectation of salvation, but cannot show one grace to suit with the great hope he hath taken up. He may afford the devil the sport, but never do him any great hurt or himself good. But maybe you will ask, how is the Christian to live up to his hopes? I answer first, in general, he is to be careful to do nothing in which he may not freely exercise his hope, and from the promise expect that God will, for Christ's sake, both approve the action and reward him for it. Ask thy soul this question seriously, before thou engagest in any work. May I hope that God will bid me good speed? Can I look for his countenance in it, and his blessing on it? It is very unworthy of a Christian to do anything as if he were afraid God or his conscience should be privy to his work. Whatsoever is not of hope is sin, because it cannot be of faith. Oh, how would this preserve the Christian heart in the right path? Possibly thou hast a grudge against thy neighbor. The fire is kindled in thy heart, though it flames not presently out into bitter words and angry behavior, and thou art going to pray. Ask now thy soul whether God will accept that sacrifice which is kindled with such strange fire. Yea, Bid thy soul bethink itself how thy hopes of pardoning and saving mercy from God can agree with the wrathful and unforgiving spirit towards thy brother. Certainly, as the sun can not well be seen through a disturbed air, neither can the eye of hope well see her object when the soul is tumultuous with anger. End of chapter 9